They is uh, August twenty third, twenty sixteen, and yes, indeed, we're running out of sixteen. But if you're luck, if you're if you're fortunate, if you're blessed, if you're whatever you want to be, whatever verb you like. <laughs> You might get to see 2017. Be that as it may. I'm calling this project Raising Cain. I hope I'm not going to disappoint myself. Who's doing it? This is what I encounter all the time. This is why I don't go. People don't say, they're not going to say, I'm not going to restaurants because there are a bunch of rude-ass black waitresses and a bunch of rude-ass black, low-intellect black customers that are, like, making dining not fun. They won't say that. You know, it's, it's kind of sweaty. Oh, that's the worst. It's when I go to hug like him, it's like, I don't want to be drenched in sweat. I mean, yes. I need two tickets to Sumanity at New York, New York. You got to go to the website, lasvegas.com. That's not uh, me. Next. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I need, please. It's the lasvegas.com. You wait, got whoa, some whoa, whoa, nerve whoa, showing whoa, up here. Whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. Look at those claws. Talons. Look at those talons. What's a talon? Um, today is uh, August 23rd, 2016, and I'm over voicing a previously made video, but I found one of those motherfuckers in my fucking subway subway. <laughs> in my subway fucking sandwich. I found one of those fucking talons. Let's go ahead.
Ooh. A claw, especially one belonging to a bird of prey. How appropriate. The part of a bolt against which a key presses to slide into a lock. Uh, I think talent. Those fucking talons on their hands. They're, they're ruining businesses. They're ruining everything. MrLasVegas.com You got some nerve showing up here. I'm sorry. Where were you last week? You know, I was in Vegas for two days. And didn't nobody tell me about being Shania Twain? I could have got a snake skin pedicure. You know what? You got anything you want to say to me? Go to LasVegas.com They have destroyed millionaires, businesses, while they have funneled the money into legal vices like makeup, hair, nails, pedicures, and bad looking clothes. <clears throat> Oh, you know what? If you are going to waste my time, then get out of my line. Rosaline, hold me back because I'm going over this counter. But if you have two tickets to Jersey Boys, Rosaline, it won the best music. Oh, don't miss out on anything, Vegas. You think they're kidding? Did you see her violently hit this lady right here? That's okay. Attack this man. That's okay. Then get out of my line. Rosaline, hold me back because I'm going over this counter. But if you have two tickets to Jersey Boys, Rosaline, it won the best music. Oh, don't miss out on anything, Vegas. To book hotels, flight shows, and more, there's only one Las Vegas. Dun, 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 dun. It never ends. This is the song that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friend. When, when you look around and you see. Black women doing this. People done told me to start a new channel to do just this. I think I'm going to have to because this is going to fuck up my flow. But I want you to understand what this world is coming to. Public Enemy said it. Black women have gotten way out of line. As you see, another fat, dark-skinned bitch with the motherfucking Bobby Christina in the teeth. Like she could just, just, like, like Moses. Why do you think they have those teeth? Because these mugs, let's call them Mondays, because everybody hates Mondays. These Mondays suck their thumbs well past adulthood, well past adolescence. Yeah, you won't know it. You won't know it till they get home, take off their 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 eyelashes, their their uh, lipstick, their eyebrows, their uh, all that shit. And then they pull out the crazy in their thumbs and start sucking their thumb and holding on to their favorite ass, dirty ass blanket. All right, let's go ahead and get on what, what this is about. I just want to break in here and say that Raising Cain, I um had, I just want to say, I've learned not to waste my time on, on black women because they're crazy. I've instead learned to video, um, make content, edit content to... Perfect by art. This is Robin. This is the Robin design. I don't wear that in the summertime. I haven't worn that in a long time. I have to make a couple of more. I think that's what I'm going to do with the black t-shirt that I have in my possession. 
Now, you can see in this video, the, the tragic dark-skinned black girl, she's giving him, she's teaching him while I'm standing there, but she's not helping me. It's fine. I just learned, stay away from them. Don't push yourself on them. I just went and got the information from him, this guy, who she's helping, but I'm standing on the sidelines. It's fine. I'm not mad. I'm just trying to say, don't deal with them. Why do I have to be cute for a dark skin girls? What are you trying to say? Dark skin girls aren't cute? And I've heard this all my life. And it's always... These... These are the ones that are raising Cain. They are raising Cain. You cannot separate a person who goes... Oh, yeah, I get a compliment, but I just can't process it the way I like it. And therefore, it was some type of, like, something bad. Raising Cain. I'm going to repeat this before we all end this. A older brother, which I am, Slapped the younger brother, which I would call Edwin, in the face. Smack across the face while you're sleeping. Me, the older brother, says to the the younger brother, I don't know. I say, don't hit, don't you can't don't hit your brother, and that could be anybody. It could be your sister. Let's just use brother as as is fellow man brother as fellow man the mother says i told him to wake him up i got this this is the reason why i developed raising cane because these are the bugs that are raising cane you're cute because Generally, people think that dark-skinned girls don't look good, but you look good. And then, of course, she's going to turn it into some type of These are the most bludgeon. Be ugly. These are... Indeed, the clock is ticking. We are running out of 2016. We're looking at <clears throat> very much looking at 2017. We still got some old matters to deal with. Who taught you about your hair? Who taught you how to make up? Who taught you how to fake up? Who taught you about heels? Who taught you to extend your hair? Who told you to weave your hair? Who taught you that? It's not in the Bible. Yeah, well, it is in the Bible, Lost Women of Zion. The notion that the ghetto black was the authentic black not only spread among both white and black intellectuals, it had social repercussions far beyond the intellectual community. Rooting black identity in a counterproductive culture not only reduced incentives to move beyond that culture, it cut off those within that culture from other blacks who had advanced beyond it, who might otherwise have been sources of examples, knowledge, and experience that could have been useful to those less fortunate. But more successful blacks were increasingly depicted as either irrelevant non-members of the black community, or even as traitors to it. In turn, this meant that many blacks who had a wider cultural exposure and greater socioeconomic success felt... 
Take the meat, leave the bones, all right? Black is not a culture. Black is a color. Hues, tones, pigments, shades. to some degree or another, to a more narrow ghetto view of the world, perhaps using ghetto language in order to prove their identity with their own race. Such social pressures become especially acute for young blacks in the schools and colleges. One consequence of this has been that counterproductive attitudes toward education have filtered upward into black middle-class young people raised in racially integrated middle-class communities such as Shaker Heights who spend less time on their studies than their white or Asian American classmates, under the overhanging threat of being accused of acting white if they devote themselves to their studies, instead of to various social activities in which other black students indulge. The painful irony is that those who make this accusation are themselves acting white when they perpetuate a redneck culture from a bygone era. Even such a modern ghetto creation as gangster rap echoes the violence, arrogance, loose sexuality, and self-dramatization common for centuries in white redneck culture, and speaks in exaggerated cadences common in the oratory of rednecks in both the antebellum South and those parts of Britain from which their ancestors came. It is not only the cultural peculiarities of the black ghetto culture which has been perpetuated by the identity fetish developed in the post-1960s era. What has also been promoted has been a conformity of Thank you, Dr. Zor. You know, did you hear what he said? He said, the black counterculture is more indicative of the regnant culture, which derived from England with the Cockney, the Cockney accents, uh, the Dodger. Oliver Twist. Oliver fucking Twist, man. Oliver Twist, Raising Cain. Um, God, I can't think of this boy's name. May I have some more, sir? There was a, there's a really well-known story. I'll weave it into another one because I don't have the video that I'm looking for. Thank you, um, black, uh, black patriarch. Thank you. Nobody goes to the movies. Nobody wants to be in the movies, no one takes their children to the movies, no one celebrates all these stupid-ass holidays of the beast more than the black woman. Thanksgiving dinners, starve their kids all freaking year so they can have one, two big-ass meals, a Christmas, Thanksgiving, and a Easter dinner. It'd be better to have the day after Thanksgiving dinner when everything is on sale if you're as economically inclined.
Okay, this is the reason why we're here. We talk about raising Cain, all the other shit. And by shit, I mean the food, the really nice dinner that you eat at your favorite restaurant. What do you think it turns into? That's in the past. This is the reason why I'm here. Raising Cain. Raising Cain, you stupid mugs. You're lucky because we're getting ready to end this. Cain, the eldest son of Adam and Eve, the murder and murderer of his brother Abel. Ah! You got an epiphany. And I hope I have this song. Because I want to play it. God, I can't believe I didn't do it. So I'm going to have to sing it. Reflections of the way life used to be. Reflections of the love you stole from me. Motherfuckers. Raising Cain. You think that was just a fucking phrase? These beasties are raising Cain. We ain't selling you niggas, and we don't fuck with you bitches, we not. Yo, 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 what's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Tommy Sotomayor. I want to talk to you a little bit about a story that I saw on Facebook. This story right here, or it's not a story, it's just a video. It's a video that a black woman put on Facebook because she thought it would be funny. The story is of a little boy who's cursing nonstop. And in the process of cursing nonstop, he's being encouraged by the women. Take a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck all of y'all. Fuck all of y'all. Raising motherfucking Cain. Raising Cain, you fucking very nice. I, I read y'all won the Olympic um, something or another and some gymnastic shit. Y'all won this shit. Not not even Komenichi. No, none of them was. But the black woman is celebrated. Hold on. Because they're better than everybody. They get motherfucking affirmative action. You're going to tell me, I don't even care about sports. August the 23rd, 2016, and um, they're pushing this agenda. Some small style, I do something to the history making or uh, whatever.
It's getting late. It's uh nine fifty one p.m. Eastern Eastern Standard Time, and I'm getting hungry, and it's my first day of college, and I didn't put it on Facebook. <laughs> But tomorrow is another day. We're gonna finish this thing. But I wanna what I wanna add on to this is how many of these mugs are single mothers raising cane? Raising cane Motherfucking raising cane. Make your own videos, do your own research. Don't raise cane. <laughs>